G'day you cheeky dogs, today we're going to be breaking down the Bluey Season 1 episode, The Pool. This episode of Bluey is called The Pool. We're going to be going through all of the Easter eggs, hidden details, Australian references in this episode, as well as having a talk about Uncle Stripe's job, his house layout, why it's so big, him being in Bali, everything like that, as well as sort of the shoe issue as well and the censorship of that over in the UK. Well, stick your thongs on. And if Bandit is secretly wearing the dog collar underneath his fur as well, and answering some of the most commonly asked questions about this episode from Reddit. So if you're new here and you love Bluey as much as I do, don't forget to hit that like button down below as well as that subscribe button and that bell for notifications so you know whenever I release any other Bluey videos. Otherwise let's get started on the location first which of course is Uncle Stripe's house which is actually based off a house in Brisbane in real life. Over on Bluey locations on Instagram they got a tip off from someone at Ludo Studios as to what the house looks like in real life that they draw inspiration for Uncle Stripe's house. Now this house is in Wavell Heights however on the Bluey map that you get with the like camping traveling set it shows you the location technically of the pool aka Uncle Stripe's Stripe's house. And it's a lot further away than a lot of us thought Uncle Stripe's house would be. We kind of thought it was on the river near a city cat location because of the episode Ice Cream. Oh, our ferry's here, Muffin. See you later, girls. Bye, Chloe. Bye, Pizza. But according to this map, it's in more like Rochdale kind of area, which is technically quite far. That's like maybe a 20 minute or so drive from Louie's house. And it is interesting though to see how much Uncle Stripe's house changes between the episodes. Specifically this episode The Pool and of course Christmas Swim at the end of season two. Because the layout and like the house levels also change as well as I should mention of course Facey Talk in season three. In Facey Talk you can see that like it's a two story house and you get a bird's eye view of what like the pool layout is meant to be. Whereas in Christmas Swim and in the pool here it looks more like a one story house from the back. So we see there's like some little magical changes happening to Uncle Stripe's house just like there are in the Gila house as well. But first, real quick, a big thank you to today's sponsor of this video, Morgan & Morgan. Now, there are certain things that you need to do if you are ever in an accident. One, make sure that you're okay. Two, make sure that you get a police report if it's a big accident as well. Three, make sure that you contact your insurance. And four, most importantly, make sure that you get legal representation. Because if you're injured and you have no idea where to start with Morgan & Morgan, it is so easy. They have modernized the injury law process making it so easy to submit a claim. You can sign contracts, upload documents and medical records all from your cell phone. You can even text your legal team anytime throughout your case. You don't need to go to meetings. So if you are ever injured in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. You can submit a claim in eight clicks or less without ever having to leave your couch. And for more information, you can go to forthepeople.com or dial pound law. That's pound 529 from your cell phone. Okay, back to the video. And we do have some really like specific Aussie dialogue in this as well. Can I have my rashi? Did you bring it? No. The girls ask about their rashies, which is a rash guard. So in Australia, usually that's like a long sleeve, like swimming top that most of us have to wear because the sun is deadly in Australia. Like we have a lot of holes in our ozone layer and that's why you need hats and sunscreen and rashies as well. Slip, slop, slap. Slip on a shirt, slop on sunscreen and slap on a hat. They also reference morning tea time. I want some food. Oh yeah, it's morning tea time. Yeah! Which again, I didn't realize was like also a very Australian thing. But yeah, morning tea time is usually when you have like a snack or parents might have tea, things like that. Now the other very Aussie word of course is thongs. Thongs are what we put on our feet. And every other country seems to have their own word from these, from flip flops to jandals to slippers. You get what I'm talking about. But of course, this then leads into the censorship from this episode that's only in the UK, funnily enough, because I feel like in America, it had the same meaning as well. So I was really surprised that Disney didn't actually cut this out. Ow, well, stick your thongs on. I didn't bring them. Ah. Okay, um... But of course, the intro scene where they talk about not wearing their thongs, that's cut from the UK version. Okay, um... How are we gonna do this? And then, interestingly, also the talking underwater part is cut from the UK version as well, so this is the comparison. <laughs> And I'm really curious about this. Like I'm assuming maybe it's because they thought it was like a safety concern where kids might try to speak underwater and then, you know, end up inhaling the water and that can lead obviously to drowning and problems like that. I can only assume that that's why they cut it, but I'm not sure. If you are from the UK and you know, let me know in that comment section down below. Now let's talk about the dog jokes, the collar and everything that's going on with that. <laughs> So of course one of the funniest dog jokes in this is about like the shaking to get dry and we see Bandit shaking very professionally as a human dog anthropomorphic animal thing. Oh. 
But he shakes very well, gets dry, and tells Bluey to do it, but she can't, of course, because she's young and hasn't learnt how to yet. Just shake. I haven't learned how to shake yet. <laughs> But if you stop and listen really carefully to when Bandit is shaking, you can hear a jingle in the background. Oh. So of course this has sparked many theories about what exactly is jingling. Is it a dog collar and tag? Because that's exactly what it sounds like and most likely that's what the sound was taken from as well because of course the sound designer who is Dan Brum, the voice of Uncle Stripe, would have just used that sound but maybe didn't realise that like that color noise was still in there. However, within the Bluey verse, of course, there is the idea that maybe it's his car keys that are hidden in like their secret pockets where they all have like these secret things hiding. Maybe it's those that are jingling. So let me know down below. Do you think that underneath it all, Bandit maybe has a dog color on or that it's his car keys in his secret weird fur pocket that are jingling? There are a few other little dog details, of course, with Uncle Stripe's decoration choices. We see a lot of dog statues that are very like Indonesia, Bali inspired, as well as dog details with the dog bone on some of the statues as well. And I love that it just sort of, it gives that whole feel of being in Bali at Uncle Stripe's house. So obviously Uncle Stripe is a big fan of going to Bali. We know that that's where him and his family are at the moment. Uncle Stripe said we could use his pool while he's in Bali. And a lot of people again on Reddit were like, I can't believe like, why are they going to Bali? That seems like they must be so rich. Bali is like, or I should say Indonesia, is to Australia what like Mexico is to Americans. It's a close by country that tends to be quite cheap to fly to and quite cheap to vacation at, kind of like Cancun almost. And it's just really typical for a lot of Australians to go to Bali for a short break. We're in the same time zone. It's really not that far to fly to. So it's not surprising that they go over there, but then also like they obviously love it so much that they've inspired their whole backyard around it. But there are a lot of like homes in Brisbane that also have this inspiration for their pool yards. And I do love like the extra details that the animators go to, to make it really feel like Brisbane, even with all the plant life as well. Particularly the heliconias, which are like the red flowers that you kind of see dropping down. Now some of the other extra little hidden details that maybe you might have missed is all the way back at the start we see Chili fanning herself with a very particular Chinese takeaway menu, and that of course is from the episode Takeaway. The water gun that Bandit uses to squirt Chili as well is also a video game reference to Splattershot from Splatoon. They literally look almost the exact same with colour and shaping and everything, so I love again that we have another video game reference in there. We see of course the back of the healer car with the number plate 419 HLR. I've brought this up many times before, but just in case you didn't know, that does actually spell out blue healer. 419 is the hex color code for blue and HLR is healer without the E's. Also the sunscreen that you see them using looks an awful lot like the banana boat sunscreen that we use a lot in Australia. It's like one of the most popular brands. So even when I saw that straight away, I was like, oh, banana boat. Now in terms of some of like the very commonly asked questions about this episode, it would have to be the fact of how did Chili get to Uncle Stripe's house without the car. Oh, that's nice to hear. Mom! And this popped up so much that it was really quite surprising, but I guess, I know every city's obviously different around the world, but in Australia and Brisbane, we have a pretty decent public transportation system. And so it's most likely that Chili just caught a bus from their house all the way over. Or of course she could have used Uber. We do know that that also exists in Bluey, thanks to the episode Phones with Grandad taking an Uber. Some people thought that maybe she might've walked, but again, based on like that map of where their house is versus the pool, that walk would have taken like a day if not more. Okay, not a day, but four hours. That's still a really, really long time. I definitely think she either Ubered or just took the bus there. And then another commonly sort of question slash theory was the idea that maybe Bandit had pre-planned this whole thing with Chili to teach the girls that boring things were important. And I do not subscribe to that theory. I don't think that that's the case at all. I think they were very much trying to show that Bandit does have flaws, but they were also kind of showing that very stereotypical trope of like the fun dad and the boring mum who's always focused on all the other stuff. Mum is such a fuss pot, isn't she? She is. Dad is way more fun. I am. So I feel like that's what they wanted to start off with, but they did a really good way of showing that yes, boring things are important too. So boring things are important sometimes then? Yes. So I love that they kind of show the consequences of thinking that you're the fun parent and what that can actually lead to if you don't actually think ahead. And yeah, again, I feel like this happens with a lot of new parents, especially mums always tend to be very like over-focused on everything that you need, whereas dads tend to not be. And it's just one of those stereotypical kind of things that happens that, that you just learn over time. I think dad is actually boring. Mum is way more fun. And a lot of people on Reddit seem to feel the same way. So I don't know, I felt like it was a really like kind of funny parent joke as well. I did also, of course, really love the dad jokes of like, hi, bored, this is hungry. I'm bored. 
Hi, Bored. Nice to meet you. Uh, I'm hungry. Oh, hello, hungry. This is Bored. Like, that made me literally laugh out loud because I've had friends who've, like, done that joke to me so many times as well. And also Bandit, like, pretending that he has a necktie because he's, like, awkward and it's like he's at a comedy show that's failed. One of my other favourite parts of this episode, though, of course, was the ending and the music. The music was just this beautiful, like, techno-style music that we hadn't really heard before in Bluey that I thought was just amazing and, of course, is on the Bluey album now as well. But just that end scene and seeing the affection between Bandit and Chili, even though they were, like, sort of semi-arguing about, like, you know, you need to make sure you bring this stuff. Oh, you obviously didn't. Like, they could have been a bit snarky at each other, but they weren't. Instead, they showed them being loving and being affectionate and kissing. And then even more importantly, showing Bluey's joy at seeing her parents' affection. And I think that was just really beautiful to see, like, she's so happy when she sees how happy her parents are as well. Overall for me, though, I would give this episode probably four out of five long dogs. I did really enjoy this episode. The music, I think, just absolutely makes it fantastic at the end. And again, it felt very Australian to me. Like, this is very much like what we would do on a summer holiday. Although it does bring up the question of why didn't Bandit just get stuff from Stripe's house? Like, I'm sure he would have had snacks and rashies and sunscreen and towels and all that sort of thing. Like, I'm assuming that maybe he just didn't have keys to his house and that's the reason why. But still, I don't know. I feel like there was some other ways that Bandit could have gotten out of this. But for me, four out of five long dogs for sure. Let me know in that comment section down below. How many long dogs would you give this episode? And while you're there, don't forget to hit that like button as well as that subscribe button and that bell for notifications so you know when we hit 100 100,000 Cheeky Dog subscribers and I'm going to be doing a massive live stream giveaway for it. I will be doing 10 different prizes for people during the live stream as well. So make sure that you know when that video is coming out by clicking that bell below. Otherwise, Cheeky Dogs, until then, I have picked you out a few other videos that maybe you would like to watch and I will see you all in another video. Mwah! Bye!